generations of uh, high thinkers and uh, highly evolved uh, musical personalities that they did a lot of work. We are lagging behind, but I think now we're, uh, we're moving faster we are, uh, in order to catch up. I think we're catching up. I last chatted with today's guest on the streets of Lucca, Italy, about the topic of vibrato. We're revisiting it today. I'm Jason Heath. This is Contrabass Conversations, and Vasily Papa Vasilio is today's guest. He did a session at the International Society of Bass's 2019 convention called Vibrato Revisited Part 2, and that's what today's episode is about. His research into the field of vibrato is astounding and illuminating and I have learned a lot and I know a lot of people that listen to the podcast have because I got a lot of responses when we put out this episode about a year ago and also put up some videos of Vasily performing and describing all of this. He's got a website that is incredibly detailed so we link up to that and I really hope you enjoy this conversation. I want to give a quick shout out here at the beginning to our sponsors Upton Bass, Steve Swan String Bass, The Bass Violin Shop, Modacity, Diderio Strings, A440 Violin Shop, and Colstein Music. Thank you so much, and here we go with today's episode. show Vasily. <laughs> last time i was talking to you we were sitting at a cafe yes. in luca that was great yeah it was great yeah and talking about vibrato yes <laughs> and, always <laughs> and so you're back uh, or what here we are now uh, indiana uh isb convention 2019 and you just finished a session on vibrato yes, vibrato yes. part that was two called vibrato revisited part two okay tell me tell me about what you what you just did yes um um now, uh, in, uh, in this uh, second part of uh, Vibrato Revisited, now um, I used more of uh, repertory, repertoire examples, uh, how we apply the various vibrato elements in differential ways in order to create, uh, to create uh, crescendo effects or dynamic effects and shape the musical phrase in general. Mm -hmm. But demonstrated that, that Vibrato is a tool that we can uh, really break up into uh, elements like uh, its width, its speed, how late or fast it comes into the note or perhaps before the note. Mm -hmm. And all that in the interests of uh, getting the bass into the noble family of the strings. I mean, any good b bass player should play like a string player with all the virtues of fine, refined, uh, you know, playing and big ideas and big inspiration. Do you find uh, do, do some of the other string instruments, violin, for example, do they have a wide tend to have a wider tonal palette with vibrato? Do they tend? Yes, absolutely, yeah, because yeah. they have um, an older tradition. Yeah. They, they have so many generations of uh, high thinkers and uh, highly evolved uh, musical personalities that they did a lot of work. We, we are lagging behind, but I think now we're uh, we're moving faster. <laughs> Uh, in order to catch up. I think we're catching up. Well, people, when I put out our episode last year, people were fascinated. I got some really great comments from people. Just like, first of all, some people said, what an amazing player you are. And just like your tone and the, and the expressivity. And it was just really interesting for people to think a little bit more uh, in more detail about yes, vibrato. Exactly. And one of those things that people seem to always talk about is, do you vibrate above and below the pitch? Do you vibrate to the pitch? I know we've talked about this, yes. but in case someone's listening for the first time yes. and they're wondering, yes. tell, us, tell us your thoughts and experiences. Um, I try to play below the pitch yep. because this is the normal practice uh, of violin players, of the great violin uh, mm -hmm. tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, there are good reasons to do that. Yep. Uh, first of all, you keep the original tone on the beat, mm -hmm. so what arrives to the auditor is not just a vibrating tone, but mm -hmm. a certain pitch, mm -hmm. preferably uh, the original pitch, vibrated. and. Secondly, because the finger does not intervene in the tone production. Yeah. When it go, actually, when it goes above the original tone, it goes into the machinery, into the 
uh, into the place where vibrato is produced. It creates character. Yeah. I would never say no. Yeah. It creates character. But to me, it's when I listen to a player, it's very clear when he goes above the tone. Mm. And I'm asking yeah. myself, did he want to have that? Or uh, did he choose to do, do that? Or is he used to playing like this? Mm -hmm. And this to me makes a difference. And this expresses somehow the spirit of my work. Uh, do what you decide and not what you're used to. Mm. Perhaps it coincides, but sometimes not. Yeah. So be more conscious about what you're doing. Sure. That makes sense. Yeah, be more intentional. Yes. Don't just do because just, yes. just my teacher told me so or because yes. that's the way I've always done it. Yes, yes. Yeah. No, 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 not habit. no, no habits, no ceremonies. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a, such great detail on your website about all of this and I'll make sure to link up to that it's great the detail and videos and all sorts yes, of things yes. um, so definitely if you're listening if you're listening definitely go check that out I'll link up to it um, but in terms of just what what you do on a daily basis to um, to maintain a wide palette of vibrato like our what 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 do you do you have some warm-up exercises that you do yes to, to, uh, yeah what do you do actually actually I, I'm, I'm a little lazy to do all that is written on, <laughs> <laughs> but I would do it if I had to become the best of myself yeah, I, yeah. I, it's there it's there and it's practice I have used it in the past but like I say in vibrato revisited too it's very crucial to define the point of pressure, mm -hmm. the exact point of pressure of each finger, in order, no matter if you play on thumb position, in thumb position, or in intermediate or in neck position, no matter how hot the angle of the finger, it always uh, touches the string, presses the string in, the, in exactly the same spot. Mm. This is one of the best ways to keep continuity of uh, vibrato and the same quality and character of tone. Mm. If you have the same quality of tone, then you can intervene into the phrase. This is number one, to, to really, from no, tone note to note, to have constant um, homogeneity of uh, tone. Okay. We don't have it so often. Yeah. You, you listen to a player, even good ones, and it's a different sound on the neck, different sound on... Uh, and we're used to it. Right, right. We say, ah, that's... Uh, we, can, we can by ear judge if it's thumb position or uh, neck position. Mm, but that's a technical Not, limitation. We shouldn't have to... We should be able to do everything in these different registers. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we should... Uh, we should uh, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. We should produce the same tone no matter if you play neck position or uh, on thumb position or whatever, in order to have continuity of the phrase. And furthermore, in order to have the, the same vibrato. It makes a it's the same technique like the good piano players do, that they don't feel if a finger is shorter or longer. They mm -hmm. just have the technique to make the fingers feel equal mm. on the finger, on the for us, on the fingerboard. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is a scope and actually as one who is interested will see I will take also the uh, when the open strings of the bass we strike them or play with the ball they produce like a, a sus 4-7 uh, chord mm -hmm. when you play right. open right uh, accordingly when you put your finger across the strings just one finger they play uh, also uh, sus 4-7 uh, uh, chord right. this chord sounds even with one finger like across the string sounds interestingly indistinctly homogeneous we take this example and then we put all four fingers shape in this mm -hmm. sus for seven and then every finger uh, plays on each uh, uh, different string afterwards to imitate this homogeneity mm. and to locate furthermore it's a different uh, second way to locate the precise uh, point of uh, pressure mm. well Talking about it is uh, more complicated right, than course, demonstrating. Of course, of course, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one definitely has to go there and really check for himself. Uh, the exercises there are videos and uh, tabulatures and uh, everything that could help. Uh, do, uh, use it, recording yourself, video recording yourself, audio recording yourself, using a mirror. What? what how? How do those various tools play? Do you find that helpful in developing vibrato? Uh, yes, yes. Um, you listen to your results and you say, okay, that was 70% and that was 65%. <laughs> but uh, that's my percentage Yeah. when I, I write something down. It's always been 
been uh, mesmerized by the ideal. It has to be there. It yeah. has to be there. Um, it's inspiration. It's really, the, the art of it is so fascinating if you think about it. It's like the painting yes. with all these different gradations. And you were even mentioning like, do I start the note and then warm up the vibrato? Or do I start with vibrato? What kind of vibrato? Yeah. When do I not vibrate? When do I dissipate? I mean, it's really, yes. it's, a, it's, a, it's a whole vocabulary. Yes, uh, as a matter, be, before we go to neurobiology, which of course, <laughs> now it's into play, absolutely. Yeah. We cannot live without looking at things like that. Yeah. Uh, I would say uh, that, mm -hmm. uh, with what I propose in Vibrato Revisited, it's about uh, minimizing the practice in time, not uh, required or in more. It's just about doing things uh, with more decision, mm -hmm. to be more clear what we are looking for, not just playing a passage for uh, innumerous times with some vibrato until you listen the sound you would like. Now you say, I decide to put li little vibrato, then more vibrato, then more than less than what their no vibrato you decide this yeah. you design you design a little uh, the phrase and you see the results if uh we're being distracted by Barry Green, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> I could feel his presence. Well, I think it's a, yeah, just being more mindful about about what you do, and just having an awareness of that. Yeah, before so yes. it's not something you're applying at the end. Uh, actually, 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 what they say is making our fingers uh, being aware, giving them some kind of conscious mm -hmm. consciousness, mm -hmm. making them, them alive and uh, live for themselves, and seeking the optimum position, and that's why both for fun and for functionality, I give um, a few photographs of cats balancing on fences uh, or making uh, jumps or just to make everybody think that it's about uh, precision and balance and about uh, uh, how a cat uses the four poles really to balance on a fence. Yeah. The string is a fence. Somehow that's... Uh, that's uh, I think um, cats are always a good inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, ba the idea of balance in vibrato is really interesting and it's yes. really valuable, you know, and yes. it really should feel balanced when yes. things are working. Uh, actually, uh, uh, what I think is that you should be, and I, I de actually demonstrated that, you should be able to play any passage absolutely perfectly and interesting, for the passage to be interesting enough without vibrato. Mm -hmm. You put the vibrato after you can be perfect with your passage or your phrase without vibrato. Yeah. It's not a part of tone production. It goes after tone production somehow. Right, right, right. Well, I love the way that you present this topic and I need to actually catch one of your sessions at one of the... Okay. <laughs> I feel so I, 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 I regretful, but, but the way that you... There's so much to do here. Well, of, of course, but the way that... And, and just the thoroughness that, that you've laid it out online, I think is really helpful for people. Yes, I hope yeah. so, yes. Yeah. yeah, so definitely check that out. Great to see you. Great to see Great you. Great to again. chat with you. <laughs> and what heck of a player and artist and teacher and, uh, and so many things. But this subject, I think, is really interesting. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, well, I, you, you're doing a great work. Hey, thanks a lot. I'm a fan of you. <laughs> Likewise. Vasily, thanks again for chatting. Love talking about this topic and other topics with you as well. So uh, this is great. I really hope you enjoyed following along with this and that you've enjoyed following along with this ISB 2019 coverage. I have a great time going to these events and it seems like every time I go, I get even more footage that I come home with. So I really appreciate people taking the time at these events to chat with me and also to come up and say hi. I had such a great time meeting people and whether or not you were there, uh, I know that you could follow along with at least my experience of the convention through the podcast. And if you're enjoying this podcast and you haven't subscribed, subscribe. It's totally free. ContraBaseConversations.com slash subscribe or however you listen to podcasts, whatever device you're on, just type ContraBase Conversations or Double Bass or whatever and it should come up. And while you're on your device, download our app which goes beyond the podcast with writing about the bass, sheet music, instructional videos, and much more. It's got a great search functionality so you can find a, all sorts of great research um, that, that we've done here on the podcast and you can download things for future listening you can bookmark them you can share them out it's a really great app I've had it out for about four years now and I sort of forget how useful it is so I've been pouring more time and resources into it and I really hope you enjoy it 
Contrabass Conversations is produced by Michael Cooper, Steve Hinchy, Trevor Jones, and award-winning bass maker Mitch Mooring. Learn more at MitchMooring.com. And thank you to Krista Copper of the Backstage Creative Podcast for all her work behind the scenes, cataloging and archiving everything we talk about here on the podcast. I'm your host, Jason Heath, and we will see you again soon for more life on the low end of the spectrum.